just the one I mentioned earlier, uh, Madam Mayor, for um, moving the item 10.5 up to 10.2. Okay, 10.4 to 10.2. Correct, sorry. Yep, okay. Any dis uh, disclosure of interest? Seeing none. Uh, no presentations or deputations for this meeting. I'd like to welcome uh, Rosalie Evans, management consultant for the Township of Red Rock, and also Nadia uh, Kuki. Am I saying that right? Yes. <laughs> As uh, will be the treasurer. Okay, minutes of previous council meeting, uh, March 9th, 2021. Any errors or omissions? None. Uh, March uh, 15th, 2021, any errors or omissions? None noted. Correspondence. So everyone's been given the resolutions from municipalities, uh, requests for resolution support from other municipalities. So there were seven in total. Everyone has been given uh, what municipality and the subject matter. Is there any, uh, does anyone have any questions? No? Okay, moving forward. None will be brought to uh, the next meeting. Uh, correspondence from Superior Adventure, local public library. So they're looking for a donation. This is Red Rock, Nipigon, uh, and Dorian. So I will work, I'll ask a few questions and see what they're looking for and see what the municipality can provide them. Okay. Is this something that we participated in last year? So maybe we could you know do what? I, I think similar? they're. Yeah, I think they're trying to do uh, quite a few things, uh, you know, amalgamating uh, some of these events. So we do try to participate as much as we can. So usually okay. we have some some stuff in stock, but maybe we can see uh, see what we have. Okay, reports from munis uh, municipal officers. Administrative report. Uh, everybody has received the report. Is there any questions that you may have? Nope, don't see any. Okay, we have a tree canopy and then council uh, parental leave bylaw report. This is uh, for information. Um, there is a, I believe maybe an error with the recommendation bylaw items, it's, it says 6.2 and 6.3. I think it should be 5.2, 5.3. Okay. It's on the agenda uh, up for discussion. This um, in 2018 to require some additional mandatory policies prescribed uh, by the province on or, March, on or before March 1st, uh, 2019. Municipalities uh, were to have a tree canopy vegetation protection policy as well as parental leave policy for members of council. So uh, these are additional mandatory. So uh, I believe we're, we're going to be passing those tonight. Okay, any questions? Just a note that the, uh, there's a mention of NEBING in the um, bylaw that's being presented. Oh. Right, yep, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that up, okay. Um, so next one is report animal control services. Oops, right here, sorry. So recommendation from uh, management is administration recommends changing the duties of the animal control officer position to remove impoundment, impoundment obligations and reposting the vacancy. So everybody's provided the information. Do you have any questions, comments? This has been a difficult uh, subject uh, in past. Uh, it's not a very attractive position. There's not a heck of a lot of people are interested in it. Uh, perhaps we may have to look at uh, amalgamating with some of the other municipalities. I think, I think the big drawback too is that you would have to take these animals in, right? So now that if we've removed that obligation, which really, um, you know, liability reasons, um, 
they shouldn't be required to do that. So that might give us some more options that people might fit into this position. Yeah, I, I agree. When I read that, that's a that's actually a really that's a good job. That's a good uh, good thing to take out of there. I think that'd be make it more appealing for sure. Good amendment. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? As people can see, our uh, council package is uh, changed up a little bit. We are streamlined. That's what happens when you have, uh, you know, outside uh, sources coming in and, and streamlining your, your processes. And it's, it's, I like it a lot. Thank you very much. So emergency access road issue. Mayor, um, yep. Excuse me. Um, we did skip over the COVID leave policy um, report. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And, and then for the reports that need a decision that aren't information only reports. We should have a council resolution approving the recommendation in the report. Okay. The first two, the first two were just for information, so that's fine. But then okay. the next one we talked about was animal control services. And if, if you could ask for a move in seconder to approve the recommendation in the report. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, to move this forward, we need a resolution. We need a uh, mover and seconder on that. Yeah, my, I move. Gord and Melissa. Our Councillor Muir, Councillor McDonald. Okay. So the COVID leave policy, uh, we don't have anything in place. Sorry, so I'm going back one. Yeah. Administration recommends council's direction relating to this matter so that appropriate policies can be presented. We have been provided information on this. Um, what is council's direction or what would you like to see? There was some options or is there something else you'd like to add? Oh. Rosalie? Yeah, just one, uh, some more information. When uh, Nadia and I were discussing this earlier today, she pointed out that uh, Township receives a grant from the government for use for extra costs for COVID. And that grant can be used to cover the pay for the people on this, so it wouldn't cost the taxpayers anything if somebody had to stay home for quarantine or another reason, or if they got COVID. Um, that, so that's that's a, a piece of additional information that I didn't have when I wrote the report. The recommendation for me is that um, if someone is getting tested or has a confirmed case of COVID, that they are to remain at home but are going to be paid from the grant rather than using their banked sick time. Okay, so when we're going to write up a policy, it's going to be specific to that. And is it going to be specific to COVID-19 or do we do one in general at like for a pandemic? So right now, or we just do specific? Well, the, the funding you have in hand now is specific to COVID. Okay. Um, it's, it, once you have a policy in place, should heaven forbid we have another pandemic, it can easily be adjusted for that. The concern, of course, being that if um, we require employees to use their sick time, that they would, you know, perhaps then not want to do that and then would come to work. So it gets a bit tricky. What, what do we do, though, when we run out of this funding and it just comes out of our... Well, I, I, I don't think that would happen because the funding is significant. A lot of funding, yeah. Unless you've, I don't, I haven't seen your previous reports on what COVID um, restriction implementations you, you you did that would qualify for use of the funds. But um, I mean, I see there's plexiglass hanging in the office, and that would be an expense that could be this fund could be drawn upon for. But I, it's highly unlikely that you've come anywhere near to spending what you received. What was that? What was the funding amount again? I thought it was like twenty five thousand. So that was oh, sorry. That would you probably would have gotten two grants. I haven't actually looked at the amount, <laughs> but I do know that every municipality did receive them for this reason. Can you guys hear? Certainly. Sorry, you're freezing up, Nadia. Air staff compliment that is off. <laughs> that better when we stop our video. 
Maybe no, yours is still frozen. Oh, so I guess my thought is, though, I understand what. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. my understanding was that the the grant funds for for safety precautions. So if we're talking about using that for a fourteen day isolation period, then I, I would think if the consideration is there, we should be spending more on PPE. Like there should be a strict mask policy then within the office, like a zero tolerance for no masks off. I mean, if we're, we're looking at 14 day isolations and things like that, I think then we need to tighten up on the mask policy then, and they gotta be mandatory. But there's also uh, like distancing. out of the office staff, right? Yeah. Like that there could, be, there could be like five people or more at a time that were in the same area when, you know, they- 100% the right. notice. I'm just, maybe if we could just like have some kind of backup plan, like what if that 25,000 was used up on so mind, many employees? Yeah. I wouldn't mind re reaching out to some of the other municipalities and seeing what they're doing as well. So I know the city can of Thunder Bay has a policy that possibly could be used. Can we try to find out, uh, get clarification on if there is more than one uh, amount of money for different things such as PPE and one for uh, actual people having to stay home? and uh, also uh, get clarification as to what the other municipalities, as you say, Gord, uh, are doing. Definitely, yeah, I can definitely do that. Okay, so as council's direction, you'd like uh, administration to come back with further information and then we can drop a policy? Yes, um, I think the one sort of pressing matter is that today, the employee in question did ask about this. Um, so we, we did sort of process payroll using that employee's sick time um, just so that it, you know payroll would process and that he would actually get paid and said that after we spoke with council, um, would there would potentially be an adjustment for that. So we would need a bit of direction on, on how to handle that situation. If the, I believe it's was, uh, if the employee used uh, sick time, hopefully uh, it would be um, returned to that employee uh, once uh, everything was clarified. Okay. Yeah, I believe council's intention is to make sure that everybody's paid uh, accordingly, right? And we don't want them to use any bank time or vacation time if it's not required. So once we get a proper policy in place, then uh, the, the employee will be reimbursed or you know, his bank will be switched over. Okay, thank you. Okay, where am I at? Good. Okay, emergency road access. So this is a report. Uh, administration recommends that the emergency road access be closed to vehicular traffic once again. We've been given background and the discussion on why. Uh, obviously, people are using it uh, to dump. You know, it happens all the time with the escape road. And uh, they're, you know, it's not just trees and branches anymore. They're, they're uh, putting regular garbage instead of driving to the dump or waiting for uh, sanitation on, on Wednesdays. So um, if it's a recommendation, how does council feel about it? And if you want to pass it, we'll, we'll I need a mover and a seconder. So, so my question is when we had the chain put up last year across and when we had issues with uh, speeding and dirt bikes because people were walking on it. So when when and who opened the, the road up? Because it was closed from my understanding from about eight months ago, we had this conversation before the snow came. Yeah, I know uh, the fencing was being uh, adjusted and fixed. I, I believe there's new gates ordered or in the process of being put up. So uh, that is being addressed. I think a number of uh, uh, members of the community are using that um, dump site for uh, proper reasons. Um, I use it uh, frequently for branches, uh, leaves, uh, things of that sort, and really do not see uh, the concern about uh, non-biodegradable uh, material going in there. As far as the concern about the uh, bikes going back and forth, well, why would you close the road to the public when the issue is that there's uh, perhaps OPP should be 
monitoring that and being uh, receiving reports. Well, we can bring it up with the OBP, but we know that they're only here a certain amount of time. Um, again, it's on the advice of, you know, uh, public works superintendent. And he's advising that there's more than just trees and branches and, and leaves that are going there. So that's what I was going to ask. Do we, like what? Yeah, do we want people just who, you know, can't get to the dump just to drive down the road and throw it there? Which we know it's happened. It's happened. It happens every year. And municipal staff have to pick it up. Or, you know, do we just keep the gate closed and it should only be open for emergency purposes? One other issue comes up and that is uh, emergency purposes. There would have to be some kind of a understanding as to who would be available at, on 24 hour basis, depending on what emergency comes up. Once that gate is locked, it would then prevent people from uh, escaping in the event of necessity. Okay. We do have an emergency plan, so the proper people would be contacted in, in that case. Who would that proper uh, people, who would they be? Well, if you'd like, we can provide you with an emergency plan and who's all in it. But besides myself and the fire chief, public works, OPP, EMS, the list goes on. So it, it's a detailed uh, plan. So if you'd like that, we can provide you with that. So uh, that's what the recommendation is. Is there a mover and seconder to pass uh, to pass this recommendation? I'll move it. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll bring it back to administration to talk to the superintendent of uh, public works. And we'll see uh, if there's another way we can address the issue. Community Development Office. So we've been, we all have the report from Ashley. Are there any questions for her? Ashley, is there anything specific you want to speak to? You don't have to read the whole report. Um, not necessarily. Um, it's mainly just uh, if there are any questions arising from what's been supplied um, and in terms of the resolutions that have to be made in order to uh, take the next step with the transfer payment agreement and entering into an agreement with the provincial government uh, to receive the funding for these projects. So as well, too, because there's a portion coming out for the grants. So we're going to get a, an analysis of what it's going to run by uh, the municipality. So we can go over that as well, too. Sorry, Gord, I missed that. Yeah, so like there's a portion of, of every grant that's going to be paid for by the municipal municipality. So I wonder if we got a financial analysis. We look at that, make a plan on how we're going to get those funds put together. Yes, so this is all, um, these are all reimbursement types of funding. So essentially we would, the municipality would get billed on um, a monthly basis, depending on the size of an invoice coming in from the engineering firm. So it would operate similarly to how the water pollution control plant is being billed now. So we would essentially get billed pay for that and then um, applying or like submitting a claim report to um, the provincial government. So it's not like we have to, or the municipality has to provide the whole um, portion up front at once. It's a invoice by invoice type of process. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, as long as, you know, as long as we, yeah, absolutely. Just as long as so we can just see what it's gonna cost every month. So obviously there's gonna be payments coming out. So just, just so we can see, so we have an idea what's coming out every month. What, what do we have to plan for? Yes, so Make a sure lot that of that also depends on the amount of work that gets completed by the engineering firms and the um, construction companies. So as part of the request for proposal process, they actually provide us with a schedule of, this is what we're looking to get done at this time period or within 
this certain um, amount of time and this is roughly what it would cost. So they provide all oh, of good. that documentation okay. oh, that's as good. part of the request yeah. for proposal process to give us a better idea moving forward of budgeting allotments. And but what's been included in your Perfect. report is kind of a, a heads up is for the overall project. This is what it's going to cost the municipality <clears throat> for the eligible portion. And then of course, any cost overruns, the HST um, and any other ineligible expenses are up to the municipality to um, come up with. The thing to consider too with all of these projects that are mentioned is they aren't happening in one year. These are spread over one to two years. So the water infrastructure uh, rehabilitation project, um, if all goes well, that would be the one that would happen in one construction season. If the bids coming back for the actual labor exceed a reasonable amount based on the timeframes that we're in now. So because we're a bit late into the bidding process, um, the bids coming back from construction companies to provide the labor within this construction season could be a little bit higher if they are um, kind of unreasonable then it can be held off and reapplied to the construction season for next year in the hopes of getting a more reasonable bid um, because we've kind of we're late coming to the game with the way the timing has just kind of fallen into place this year um, so typically those construction bids would hopefully go out in January, February, whereas we're already in April. So the typically construction companies have already have their summers planned. So it's kind of about getting this out there, see what comes back. If the bids are too high, then we wait till next construction season. Um, and then for the recreation center one, that one is um, a three-year project. So you'll see in the description here that we have until March 31st, 2023 to complete the entire project. So it's not like we have to come up with this big pool of money all at once. This is something that we can um, spread out over the next one, two, and three years for, sorry, one or two years um, appropriately according to those schedules that come back. Make sense? Okay, so from what you need from Council tonight is a resolution to enter in a transfer payment agreement between Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Ontario as presented by the Ministry of, of Infrastructure and the Corporation Township of Red Rock for the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, ICIP, the Green Street. So do we have a mover and seconder for that? So Sarah Park, uh, Councillor Park and Councillor Tedesco. And then there's the other resolution for the fire safety grant. Um, were there any questions regarding the fire safety grant? Okay, so that's the other resolution that we have. And then that is all for me. Okay, do I have a uh, mover and seconder for the fire? What am I gonna say? The fire grant, fire safety grant. Uh, Councillor Tedesco and Councillor Muir. And members of council, if, if I just want to add something um, in terms of the municipal portion of the various projects, when the budget is presented, all of these issues will be presented in the budget report. So you'll be able to see what the plan is to cover those costs, how it's going to be covered and from where the money's coming. Okay, thank you. Reports from committees, uh, the public library monthly report. This is February 9th. Um, everybody's read the report. Are there, are there any questions? As you know, the library is still doing curbside pickup. They have reduced hours and people can go on the website and, and look into that. Okay, bylaws. Bylaw 2021-1228 relating to the tree canopy protection. Anna has a meeting in it. Yes. So this this is a resolution to amend to change the word Nebing to Red Rock, wherever it was mistakenly included. So it's one uh, C. Second line. Okay. Thank you. Also one E. 
there's 30 tree. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I forget again. Do I need a mover and seconder for this? Yes. Okay. Uh, as amended? Yes. Okay. So I need a mover and seconder to uh, to bylaw number 2021-1228 as amended in C and E. Um, Councillor McDonald and Councillor Park. Okay, bylaw number 2021-1229, uh, appoint a treasurer and repeal bylaw 2018-1189, uh, appointment of former CAO. Everyone's read the document? I was just a little confused. Sorry. Yeah, myself as well. Go ahead. I was just like, Screen is this, frozen. does this mean um, that Nadia is the new treasurer permanently, or is this for the interim? That, that will depend on, on how things move forward with council and how you structure your office eventually. Um, Ms. Cookie is prepared to do the work from now until you don't need her anymore. She had a good um, review today with um, um, Ms. Cameron and she has a better handle on the workload, etc. Don't know if you want to say something. Yeah, so I, you know, I realized that I haven't presented council with a contract and largely it was because I, I didn't have the information I needed to do so until today. Um, and so I'm prepared to stay permanently or, you know, until you choose that you don't want me here. Uh, so if it, if it happens to work out for you and you like how things are going, happy to stay on. If you'd rather look at a different setup and I would stay to train someone else, that's also fine too. Okay, so this bylaw is, is should we put that in the bylaw somewhere that? So you, you need to have a treasurer appointed, period. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you, it, the bylaw is in place until the new a new treasurer is appointed. So as right as we discussed the last council meeting, we we kind of know the way we're going. We're going to be structuring uh, administration. We know that uh, the CAO slash tax collector treasurer, yeah, all of that, that right needs. Uh, so we're going to try this out. Uh, Nadia's you know uh, committed herself uh, long term if if we so choose, and I think we just revisit this in in six months. Yeah, because I believe we discussed last meeting we were going to post the, the position, open competition. That was the understanding I had from our last council meeting. We were going to post these two positions. Now, now something in turn, it, it always works out nice, but it, it should because we're a municipality. We should be, in my opinion, doing open competitions. Yeah, so we're going to discuss a little bit more in, in camera um, about recruitment. Okay. Um, regardless of whether you are going to eventually do a competition or if you're going to do it next week, you're still not going to get somebody here in time to do the work that's necessary. None of the bank reconciliations have been done. There's a lot of work that a treasurer needs to get on top of immediately. So, you know, the contract is cancelable if council decides not to continue with it. In the meantime, you need a treasurer and Ms. Kuki is prepared and capable of, of fulfilling the role. So it's my recommendation that this bylaw should be passed and further discussion about recruitment can always take place. So this is an interim position then for now. Yeah. For now. Yep. That yes. works. Yeah. So like even, you know, even if you decide, okay, we don't like this and we don't like that and we want somebody else, which is, you know, completely fine. Um, I, I don't like leaving people a mess. So in, at the very least, if you decide to hire somebody different, they will have a clean start um, rather than like it, you know, sort of what's going on now uh, into perpetuity. So. Yep. Okay. So do I have a mover and seconder to pass the bylaw? Councillor Park and Councillor Tedesco. Okay. 
Okay, we have bylaw 2021-1230 related to parental leave for council. Um, everyone has the document. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, so we're, I just want to remind you that this is this is a requirement from the from the government for every municipality or city, depending on size. Even if, even though this is a part time position, that's right. It's still mandatory. It's mandatory for every Ontario municipality, and I I believe that the reason the province did this was to try and encourage more women to run for a municipal office. And so it's across Ontario. It's not specific to larger cities or smaller towns. Um, I, I, as I said in the report, I, I just based this on what we did in Ebing. If, if council wants to change it, have fewer weeks or a different, a different way that it's it's uh, governed. Every municipality pays its council members differently as well. Some some council members, especially in the larger urban settings, have like a living wage, like it's a full time job. And others, especially the smaller rurals, it's just a stipend that doesn't barely cover your costs. Yeah, I it's thought it was kind of crazy yeah. for, you know, like the minimal hours and the minimal pay for Red Rock Council anyways, to, to be on maternity leave. I just thought it was crazy. But if that's what the entire province is doing, I guess we don't have a choice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You have a choice with, you know, how many weeks you want to do it or how if, if the pay is reduced or full or you, you have a choice on how you want to structure this leave, um, but you don't have a choice in in passing the leave, making sure that it exists. Okay. Now, are there any amend amendments that people would like to see? <sighs> no, no, it looked to me, it looked, it looked pretty standard. Um, but yeah, if it's mandatory for sure, it can stay as is in my opinion. Okay, do I have a mover and seconder? Councillor Park and Councillor Muir. Shoot, my paper's all over. Okay, that's it for bylaws. Unfinished business, we have none. Uh, new business, none. Closed session. I need a mover and seconder to go into closed session. Should I read out the reasons? No, Your Worship, you don't have to. We can put those in the minutes for sure. It's just that obviously the municipal act requires that when you do pass a resolution for closed session, you have to explicitly say why. Okay. That detail will be in the minutes. Okay, I need a mover and seconder. Councillor Tedesco, Councillor Park. So anyone that's online watching uh, Council right now, we're going to log off. We have a different Zoom. Uh, we're going to log into that and then we will come back. Okay. Let's hope this all works.